Network 18 and True Caller held a call it out conclave in the national capital to shine the spotlight on the urgent need for a collaborative effort to fight against the harassment of women. Key stakeholders came together to deliberate upon the ways to enhance women's safety in the online and the offline world. Talking about making communication safer was Alan Mamidi, the co founder and CEO of True Caller. So we are here to talk about how we can make the internet, how we can make uh, platforms a lot safer uh, for women particularly. Uh, and I will uh, get into all of those issues in just a second, Alan, but I want to bring up uh, one of your quotes from a couple of years ago where you said that as humans, we're always uncertain of the unknown. It could be a different nationality, a different skin color, or even name that you're not familiar with. We're hesitant to put our trust in the unknown. How much of this, uh, of trying to know the unknown, of trying to familiarize yourself with the unfamiliar, of trying to find comfort in the unknown, has driven the vision for you at True Color? Thank you. Uh, yeah, I actually recognize that quote. Uh, no, but look, I think the unknown is something that always gets us excited. We want to, you know, open a box and see what's in there. And uh, just listening today and now to the minister about, uh, you know, cer certain areas about the cyber crime, and it just gives me a lot of ideas on things we can do to just make the reporting even easier. Uh, and our CPO and MD, Rishit, is here as well. I'm going to talk with him later on. About so is there going to be a meeting tonight? Yeah, of course. <laughs> uh, so I think there's so much we can do. And um, we have the platform and the reach to uh, create these uh, tools to make communication safer. Um, and, and these are unknowns, mm. you know, and I think that's always what drives us. The way that you founded the company along with your co-founder is also a fascinating story which goes all the way back to 2009 and congratulations on listing on the, the NASDAQ in Stockholm. Uh, but, you. I, you know, there are several complex issues involved here, so let's try and unpack them one by one and let's start by talking about the Indian market because that's a very strategically important market for you. It's not just your largest market, it's also the market that has the most number of employees for true caller. So let's address the India market and why it's so unique and why it's so special to you? Well, it's, uh, it just became obvious to us that India is such an exciting market, so many people coming online, um, and we were excited about the opportunities and being a part of that growth curve, honestly. Um, and when we started to learn more about the culture, we also realized that uh, there is a lot of uh, similarities with the culture where my parents came from, which mm -hmm. was the Kurdish part of Iran. Uh, many similarities in the language as well. So, you know, we, we just felt this connection a lot. Um, so, now that India has become such an important, uh, you know, part of the world, it, it makes a lot of sense for us to focus even further and it makes sense for us to have the largest part of our organization based here as well. Um, and I'm looking forward to, to continue that investment. Well, we look forward to you continuing that investment here in India, but linked to your story and your growth story, particularly in India, uh, is the regulatory framework. It continues to be a work in progress. In fact, you've been a key stakeholder. You've, uh, you've given your feedback to the government on what the new data protection and privacy bill should look like. Uh, you were part of the JPC's proceedings, the Joint Parliamentary Committee proceedings. Uh, you uh, were there in uh, last November of 2020 uh, to, to, uh, to present your hypotheses for what the bill should look like. Uh, how different is India today? Uh, because you know, the EU has the GDPR, and some would say that that perhaps goes too far uh, on issues like privacy, and India perhaps has too little. So does that complicate things for you as a company? Well, I think, you know, because we started a company in Stockholm, Sweden, which has the strictest rules around privacy, and always been like that, but at the same time, we, we want to keep an open society and make ac information accessible, we apply this philosophy of always prioritizing consumers first. Uh, and that's been the case since we started a company. Like, as an example, you've always been able to unlist your phone number very, uh, very easy on Truecaller because we want to give that opportunity to anyone. Um, 
And so, so True Caller as a product stands for trust and safety, which means we always have to think about the things we're building that they actually benefit our mm. customers and our users of the platform. Um, and the reason why I'm saying this is because I think we're doing a lot of things that other companies are not doing mm. that I think they should be doing. Okay, so, like what? No, but for example, you can download all your information. You can rectify your user information from TrueColor. You can delete all your data. We have all Indian data processed and, and stored in India. And these are the things that I think you know, every company should work with um, and give those options to the users so that they know what data is actually this company collecting about mm. me. Uh, and we've had this for years. And I think for that reason, I think you know, the, the bill that the government is working on, I think it's good. I, I think they should think about uh, data in the cloud, cyber safety and so forth. We think it's good. Now, because we are a Stockholm-based company, we also went through GDPR. And we wanted to share some of the learnings from that because uh, there were, were good things, but there were also bad things in the mm -hmm. sense that it harmed growth for many companies, smaller companies that did not have the financials to hire expensive law firms to, to make sure they're not just breaking the law, you know. Mm -hmm. And I, I think the government is taking these um, learnings uh, into, you know, action here, which I think is really, really good. Um, I've read the bill a couple of times, and I, I think you know I think they're covering some very very good areas. So I'm not sure I agree that it's lacking uh, mm. things uh, that some some people might uh, think. So I mean, in general, I'm positive to the bill, um, and I, I'm confident that the government is also keeping in mind that they don't harm the growth of yeah. startups. Yeah. And I think that's important. Uh, yes, so balancing the need for privacy and ensuring that there is privacy, but without uh, killing entrepreneurship. Uh, and that, that is a delicate balance that hopefully the government will be able to maneuver as and when the bill uh, is uh, finally uh, ready. Uh, but Alan, you know, there are many concerns around issues like consent. Uh, there are issues around uh, data mining. There are issues around data monetization. Now, I don't know how many people here in this audience are familiar with what Truecaller does or doesn't do, but you know, th this is the opportunity to give us a sense of what really is happening in the back room. And more importantly, in light of the experiences that you've had over the last 13 years, where do you believe there is need for further course correction, review, uh, or uh, you know, change? Yeah, I, I'm not sure I need to introduce True Caller, <laughs> at least not in this country. Uh, but we, I mean, we stand for making communication. No, not True Caller, but I'm saying, you know, what happens as far as data monetization, data yeah. mining, et cetera, concerned? Yeah. Because there, there, are, there are all kinds of uh, notions about that, not just linked to True Caller, but other platforms as yeah. well. Yeah. Look, I, I think transparency is the most important word here. We've always been transparent of what data we collect always ask the user and always have an opt-in and also give them an opportunity to opt out. And I think that's something that every company and technology company should add to their product. And I think that's where, um, you know, things are missing out, that you install an app, but you don't really know what's happening in the background. Uh, and sure, there are misconceptions about what TrueColor does. Many people think that TrueColor steals your contacts, which is not the case. Um, and if you use our product, if you install it, you will see exactly step by step what's happening and what's not happening. Uh, and there are too many companies who are not doing that. And I think if we can find a balance where transparency is sort of the key word um, and always be open with the, the user, but also being worded in a way that even my grandmother would understand not in legal terms. Um, and I think that's extremely important. You know, no one reads the terms of use on Apple, you know, every time no. you have to update, you know. How can we summarize that in, you know, four bullets? Um, and I think that should be a requirement. You need to summarize it so that your grandmother can understand it in four bullets. Yeah, absolutely. I, I completely agree with you there because very often you just press I agree because you don't want to go through uh, the, the long notes that, that uh, come in along with that.
we're here during this campaign uh, to try and ensure that uh, the online space is a safer space for women. Uh, and let's be very, very clear and honest, women do face uh, harassment, abuse, uh, threats uh, all the time uh, in the online world. Why is this uh, an issue that you're so passionate about? Yeah. No, look, I grew up with my mother and my two sisters. I have a daughter, she's turning nine this year, and you know, last week we gave her a phone for the first time, and I'm, I'm scared. Um, but I did an experiment not long ago. I created a, a, you know, a fake account on Twitter, and I pretended to be a woman. I opened up my DM, and you should see you know, the harassment that you get. Yeah. It's... it's uh, Horrifying. But what were you posting as as a fake I, woman? I just I, I just pretended to be a normal person, uh, you know, uh, uh, joining conversations, you know, and it's. I think it's an experiment that everyone should do to understand the reality, and this was, you know, when it comes to women's safety, this was a subject that we we realized this quite early. I think it was in. 2012 or 2013, mm -hmm. we started to look at our user base and we saw that 40, 50% of our users are women. And for a utility product like TrueColor, that doesn't make sense. Um, you know, how many, how many women use you know, certain utility products? Not many, but for TrueColor, it was a lot. And then we started to understand the reason behind it. And, and that's when we realized that you know, women are using our service in, in many different ways. Uh, they want to verify the Uber driver if he, mm. he's a good actor or a bad actor. He, uh, he wants to know who's calling me or who's texting me. Should I respond to this? You know, when I ask my sisters, what do you do when you get an unknown call? They say, I never call back. Because I know if I call back and that person knows I'm a woman, they might harass me for weeks. And this is in Sweden, so it's not an Indian problem, it's, it's a universal yeah. problem. Um, and there's so many things happening in the world, uh, uh, bad things, and companies tend to want to focus on many things and not do anything. Mm. And we felt that, look, we want to focus on one subject and be really, really good at it, and that's women's safety, and it represents our user base. I mean, we have, in India, we have 220 million active users. Half of them are women. That's a lot of women. Um, so we told the team many years ago that we want to focus on this, we want to invest in this, and we want to do it, you know, all the time, not just a one-off thing, mm. you know, you tweet something and then you're good, and you f it feels good for a minute and then you forget about it. Not like that, let's do something serious about this. Um, and the team has done a fantastic job, uh, I don't know how many years we've done this now with the It's Not Okay campaign. But, you know, they feel a, a big passion around this as well. So I'm very thankful and humbled to have a team. And also having Network 18 working with us on this subject. And uh, we're going to continue to do this for many, many years going forward. How, how long did you have that fake Twitter account as a woman? Well, I still have it. Oh, you still have <laughs> yeah, it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. I go in and check from time to time. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't want to go into details, but pe people have sent me pictures that, that are... You know, I just want to have one button and click, you know, and mm. it gets report. The problem is that who is this person on the other side? You know, it's usually someone hiding uh, behind some aliases. And this is where True Color has such a big importance in the society that we actually reveal the true identity of people. But explain to me exactly that. How do you solve the problem of anonymity? I mean, if I decide to download the True Caller app mm. and the Uber driver is not on True Caller, how will I verify uh, his credentials or her credentials? Yeah, I mean, most likely that person's family members or friends are using True Caller. And when he calls his friends and family members, and we might not have a match, then they can suggest and write, hey, this was you know, X, Y, and Z. Um, and then eventually, when we have enough data suggested by the community, then we will show that information. Okay. And when we have enough data that we feel confident that this is the person who the community say they are, then that person cannot go in and create an account on TrueColor and, and you know, fake the name, because we will say, okay, you say your name is you know, X, Y, and Z, mm. But according to the community, this is your real name. Mm. So in light of uh, what you've done since 2012, because you said that that is when you decided to champion the cause of women, uh, 
you know, in terms of tools, in terms of partnerships, in terms of forging, uh, you know, uh, partnerships with various stakeholders, including the one that uh, we're doing here this evening. How have you built around this cause? How have you built the ecosystem around this area? You know, I think many of the things we do come organically from the organization. Certain, many things that we do, we actually don't go out publicly and, and you know, pump our chest and, you know, talk about it like that. Uh, so we do many things under the radar because we want to. And I was, um, you know, I had a lunch yesterday with Swati, who's uh, the chairperson of uh, the Delhi Commission for yes. Women. Yes, yes. And she told me, and this was an incredible story. So a couple of weeks back, our team decided to put in a quick dial button inside of Truecaller to mm -hmm. 181, the women helpline. And overnight, the number of calls doubled. Uh, so women calling in and, and reporting that, you know, they feel unsafe, they have been harassed or something like that. And, you know, they didn't ask for anything. Uh, we didn't ask for anything. We did it because we wanted to. So we do many of these things um, under the radar because we want to. And, uh, you know, when speaking with her yesterday, it gave me some good ideas on, you know, how can we, when women call this helpline, how can we trigger a location sharing? to them so they know where this person is because that, apparently that's one of the big challenges. Mm. Um, how do you find these women who feel unsafe? So there's so much we can do and you know, I, just sitting here, I just want to go and you know, work basically. <laughs> you know, you talked about some of the things that you would like to work on based on real feedback. And this is feedback that you've got from a woman who's heading uh, the Delhi Commission uh, here and, and is giving you real feedback from real women and their experiences. What are the other ways for you to be able to get into the feedback loop and understand what really are the issues uh, that continue to challenge women uh, in the online world? And how long before you have a product iteration? I mean, you talked about you know, the location sharing and that's going to be the next idea that you work on. How long does it take for your team to be able to go from idea to execution? One week, two weeks. That's it? Yeah, I mean, why not? You know, we are... <laughs> We are very Swedish in the sense that we have a very <laughs> flat organization. Uh, so if someone wants to get something done, they get it done. Uh, we don't have big processes and please create a PowerPoint and you know 50 people should approve it. No, let's build. You know when COVID, the second wave happened last year in India, our team felt like okay, we need to do something. In one week, they created this COVID health directory so that they could find nearest hospitals. COVID helpline and these kind of things, which had a tremendous impact. And that was done in less than a week because people just sat down and coded. And then we sent it to production. Mm. And we do weekly releases, so it goes really fast. Okay, well, that, yeah. that, that's good to know. Well, Alan, let me then end by asking you, uh, you know, what is the vision for Truecaller from here on? Uh, and what has been the biggest lesson of the journey so far? Not just in being able to address uh, the issue that we're, we're talking about here, but building a business, scaling up a business, globalizing a business. Mm. What's been the biggest takeaway on that front? Well, it's one of our values, uh, which is never give up. I think too many entrepreneurs, uh, after you know two, three years, they give up. It takes a long time. I mean, we've been doing this for 13 years now. Um, and it's something that we want to uh, retain in the organization that if you feel a strong conviction around something, just do it. And you know, even if you don't see any results the first year or second year, it's okay. You know, it will come as long as you feel a strong conviction around this. So never give up is an important value for us, which I think a lot of entrepreneurs should bring with them. It's like this subject, mm. honestly. Like it's such a big problem, and we can do many things, and we might not feel that we're moving the needle, but I'm sure we are. But it's, you know, it, it's a journey. Um, so we, we should never stop. We should never give up on that. Well, yes, we, we, you know, th that is good advice to all the startups who are listening. I, I remember your investors, uh, Sikoe, on the day that you uh, listed uh, on the NASDAQ in Stockholm said that they started off as underdogs, but today are category creators. Uh, yeah. uh, so, you know, in, did you, when you started the company in 2009, did you think that that is what you would end up doing? You would be a category creator? <laughs> no, I mean... I mean, me and Nami, we were just 24 years old. We were sitting in his kitchen and we were building a product that would solve the need that we had uh, to be able to know who's calling me. I mean, we were coders, so we built it. 
And then we said, okay, let's give it out for free. And we saw, you know, the first week, 10,000 users started to use it. And we were like, okay, there are other people that have this need. So we decided to resign from our full-time jobs and just go all in. And it's true, you know, the category didn't really exist, which made it hard. Like, you couldn't go to investors and say, hey, we're the Uber of phone <laughs> calls, you know. It, it's hard to describe what we do unless you experience How would it. you describe yourself today? Well, you know, I would say TrueColor is a communication platform that makes communication safer and more efficient. Now, if you sit in, you know, Silicon Valley, you probably don't understand what I'm talking about. But if you're sitting here, you understand what that actually means. And that was a challenge for us, um, you know. But fortunately, we got Sequoia from India who came in and backed the company, Shailesh Lakhani and the team. So it's been phenomenal. Well, we wish you the very best of luck, Alan. Thanks so much for joining us here uh, and for sharing your story as well as championing the cause of making the online space safer for women and more power to you and your team for ensuring that that does in fact happen. Ladies and gentlemen, a big round of applause for Alan Mamadi. Thank you, Thank very you so much. much for joining us. Thank you.